You probably know by now that Claude Desktop can connect to MCP servers and read through your file system, connect to Postgres databases, and much more. But what if you don't want to use Claude Desktop? Well, then you'd have to implement your own MCP clients. And that's exactly what we're going to do today. If we take a look at my screen here, we can see the finished product. We've got a chat app. Works just the same as Claude Desktop. The only difference is this is in a terminal. And I've connected it to the file system MCP server. Let's ask it a question. What files do I have available? As we can see from the UI, it's very similar in function to Claude Desktop. And we can actually see that it was calling different tools. In this case, the list directory tool. Claude Desktop is probably the most popular MCP client right now, but it comes with some restrictions. First of all, you can only connect to Claude, which may be a problem if you don't want to use Claude or if you want to use an open source model or something faster or something cheaper. And secondly, you have no control over the actual interface or the flow of the app. They say MCP servers are the USB-C of AI, and that is that is true, but for USB-C, you have to have something to plug it into, and that something has to be good, or no one's gonna wanna use it. And that's why we're gonna talk about MCP clients today. I've written a pseudocode of what an MCP client is, and we're gonna take a look. And it's not that complicated. This is only 10 lines of pseudocode. And it really is just a while true loop. So while the user is still inputting messages, what are we gonna do? First, we're gonna wait for the user input. So if we go back to my implementation, we see that we are currently waiting for me to type something in. If I type something like, output the contents of the git ignore. So if I type something like this in here, we are now going to append that user input to the messages array. And we'll talk about what that is in a second. Then we are going to send that entire messages array to the LLM and the LLM we get to choose. Then we are going to grab the LLM's response, the assistant message, and we are going to append that to the messages array. And then here is where the actual MCP fun stuff happens. If the assistant decided to call any tools, we are going to go and call the tools on behalf of the assistants. We are going to add the responses of those tools to the messages array. Then we are going to send the messages array back to the assistant, back to the LLM, and wait for its response. And if the LLM is done calling tools, then we will send it back to the user. Otherwise, we will continue to execute tools until this is done. That's all it really is. Obviously, you can get more complicated with a UI, with displaying things, with managing the conversations, but this at its core is all you need to do to implement an MCP client. So now let's actually kick it back to the code. So we're in main.ts here. We're going to scroll up a bit into the main section. And if you remember from a previous video, previous two videos where first I was talking about MCP transports, and then most recently I was talking about how tool calls work at a conceptual level. We've got this code here where I'm actually instantiating an MCP client instance that is an MCP client from the Anthropic SDK, and I'm hooking it up to the in-memory file system server. Now, if you recall, the file system MCP server is available for free on GitHub. If we take a look at here, it comes with tools like git file info, search file, directory tree, pretty basic file system operations, stuff you'd be able to do with an LS or other command line tools. And if we come down here, we've got a few important things. Well, first of all, we're gonna need an instance of an OpenAI client. We are gonna be making LLM API requests using the OpenAI clients. I don't actually need to use an OpenAI, an OpenAI model here, and I'll explain why in a second, but for now, we're just gonna be using GPT-40 mini because it's cheap and fast. Then we're gonna be instantiating an instance of what I'm calling the Tommy Codes MCP clients. And then we're literally just gonna go into chat loop. And if we take a look at this chat loop here, it looks very similar as you would expect to the pseudocode while continue chat. So basically while the user is still inputting stuff, let's go ahead and actually handle that message in the MCP client. So the actual bulk of the logic is happening in the MCP client. This class is gonna have four member variables. It is going to have one, the OpenAI client. So that's gonna contain the connection information. It's gonna contain the API keys. Basically everything we need to actually make API requests to the LLM is gonna be in here. We are also gonna have a reference to the MCP client from the Anthropic SDK. And I know it's a bit confusing that we have MCP client referring to this base thing from Anthropic and then also MCP client referring to this application I built and then also MCP client referring to this class. I, I know that's unfortunate, but just, just bear with me here. Then we're gonna have the system prompt. And if you guys recall, the system prompt is going to direct the overall flow of the interaction, the overall tone, the overall rules of the LLM interaction. In this case, we're just gonna append a system message to the messages array. 
And then finally, we got this on new message function here, which is optional. And I'll explain why we need that in a second. Now we're going to jump right into handle user input. This is the main loop in the MCP client. The first thing we're actually going to do is call into the MCP clients list tools API. And why don't we actually run through this in the debugger? I think that's going to be a little easier here. So I'm going to click debug. And we are going to go into process console so I can input and I'm going to say, hey, list the files. And that is going to put us if we look up here into this code, where are we? Yes, we are in handle user input. And I actually want us to inspect this tools uh, response here. So that would be server.tools. And the MCP client is really just an API wrapper. And the MCP server, which in this case is the file system server, is defining all of the tools that we're able to use. And if we look in the response to the list tools API, what we have down here is a JSON object for every tool that the server defined. And this is all the functions we were expecting. So read file, write file, et cetera, et cetera. Note that this is the only line in the entire code base where we're actually calling into the MCP clients, the Anthropic MCP clients API. We don't need to do it anywhere else. You could definitely get fancier if you wanted to, but this is really all you need to do. Because we're using the OpenAI API client to make LLM requests, we're actually going to need to convert this tools array, which is coming from Anthropic world into OpenAI world. And so if we actually look here, we're calling a map, we're converting the tool. If we look into convert tool, it's kind of a silly little function, but basically we're just taking what I'm calling the MCP tool and we are reformatting it to behave like an open AI tool. And so let's actually pull up the debugger again and look at what's in these objects. We have a description, a name, and an input schema. If you were paying attention in the previous video, every time we make a request to the LLM, it's basically going to have in its context window all of these tools. So that's going to include the description, it's going to include the name, and it's going to include the request and response schemas. So the LLM knows how to invoke the tool and knows when to invoke the tool. And this conversion, what I'm talking about is we need to communicate that very precisely to the OpenAI API client. And that's why we're converting it here. And so if we look, we're really just grabbing parameters out of the MCP tool and dumping them into the JSON that OpenAI expects. It's nothing fancy. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Let's step forward in the debugger. And now we're going to append the user message to the messages array. And the reason I keep saying messages array and not message that we're sending back to the LLM is we're actually having a prolonged conversation with the LLM. I know it's possible to just send a single completion. So, so to just ask it a one off question, grab the response and get on with your life. But in this case, because we're calling tools, we don't just want to send the user request and get the tool response. We want to return the tool response, wait for the LM to give us more instructions, and then continue with our loop. But in order to do that, the LM with each request needs to know the entire context of the conversation. So every time we make an LM request, we're going to be including the entire messages array up until this point. And the reason we need to do that is that gives the LM all of the context it needs to know that it already called a tool, it already got a tool response, and that now it can proceed, call another tool, or actually just respond to the user's request. So managing the messages array is a very serious problem with developing an MCP client, and it's very important that this is done with care. You probably don't want to vibe code this part. You probably actually want to think about how you're going to implement this and how you're going to handle the messages array. In this case, all we're doing is appending messages and then passing that messages array reference to the OpenAI API client. We're not doing anything really fancy here. And note that the messages, they come with different roles. And so in our case, the roles that we're supporting are assistant, tool, system, and user. User would be anything that I type in or anything the user types in. System, we already talked about. Assistant is going to include both the assistant telling you something like, hey, here are the files you asked for, or here's the answer to your question. But the assistant message can also contain a tool call. And that would be the assistant is saying, Hey, I noticed that you have a load. I noticed that you have a list directory function. Why don't you call that for me and hear the arguments to use? So that would also be present in the assistant message. And then finally, you have a tool message. The tool message is going to contain the tool response. Here is the initial response. When we go back to the overview, that would be well, LM response includes tool calls. So that's where we're at right now. We're grabbing the initial response. And where are we in this debugger here? Let's continue, step through. We're going to wait for the initial response. And if we grab the assistant message, which should be up here, where is it? Assistant message. Here we are. Assistant message tool calls, you'll notice, contains an array of tool calls. Note that the assistant can decide not just to call one tool, it can call multiple tools concurrently. Whether or not you invoke the tools concurrently on your end is completely up to you. But these LMs are now smart enough to know when more than one tool needs to get called in response to a user's request. If we look down at the tool call, we're going to see the arguments. In this case, the list allowed directories function didn't take any arguments. 
and also the ID. The ID is going to become important later. But note that the server, so in this case, OpenAI, they generate this ID. This is not something that you would populate, but you do need it. We'll notice that this tool calls array, which again, we just stripped from the assistant message, is non empty. And because of that, we're going to continue into the tool execute loop. We're going to go in here and we are in this while is not done with tools. So while I'm still, while I still need to execute tools on behalf of the assistant, we're going to be in here. What we're going to do is we're just going to loop through and go one by one and call the tools. And we do need to parse the arguments because again, the tool arguments are coming from OpenAI world and we're going to be invoking the tools in Anthropic world. So I, I lied to you guys. I said before that the only place we we're going to use the MCP client was to list the tools. That was completely incorrect. We of course need to invoke the tool and that is also happening via the MCP clients. And if we take a look here, this is how you invoke the tool. You just call the call tool method of the MCP client and that is going to go in. And if you're using SSE, it's going to make an HTTP request. If you're using SCDIO, it's going to send a message over standard out. And in our case, because we're using in-memory transport, it's just going to call a function because we're using in-memory transport. Anyway, if we step over this, we're going to get the tool call results, which is coming from the file system server. And again, we were calling list allowed directories. So if we go into file system server and we look for list allowed list directory args, it's somewhere in here. Yes, list directory. So this would be, where is it? List allowed. Never mind. It's right here. This would be the list allowed directories function. We just call into this. This is what just got ran. But regardless, we are not in the server anymore. We are back in the clients and we see that we got this tool response. We have this tool call results. The tool call result is coming directly from the MCP server. And it is going to contain the response body. So where are we? Tool call results. We look here, we have a content. This content is going to be completely defined by the MCP server. And in this case, it is a text content and it's just going to contain the string allowed directories and it's got my current directory here. That's completely controlled by the MCP server. Anyway, we call into that tool and now here is us converting it into a tool message. If we look here, like I said, the tool message, it's going to have a role, it's going to have a content. And the content in this case is just us taking the JSON response from the MCP server and turning it into a string. This will allow the LM to recognize that the tool was called and allow the LM to proceed with the information that it gained from the tool call. Here's where we're going to see that tool call ID. I mentioned before that the LM can decide to call more than one tool at once. Well, what happens if it calls more than one tool at once in your response, you're going to have multiple tool messages. How is the LM supposed to figure out which response corresponds to which request? Maybe it could figure it out based on context clues. Like if one function was list allowed directories and the other function was write a file to Google Drive, it could probably figure out which response corresponds to which tool. But honestly, that's not really a good approach. What OpenAI decided how this works is you pass the tool call ID from the request and you have to manage that. You have to do the bookkeeping as the client implementer and you include the tool call ID in the tool response. If we go up, if we go up here, we'll notice that now in the tool message, the tool call ID is this call underscore UWO, again, randomly generated by the server. This is going to allow the LM to link up the tool request with the tool response. And now it's going to be able to actually serve our request. Now we're going to continue stepping through here and we're done executing all the tools for this round, but now we need to go back to the assistant and say, Hey, I called this tool for you. Now, what are we going to do? So we look here at the tool call follow up message doc tool calls. We will notice that it is non empty. And in this case, that means the LM decided that it needs to call another tool. And if you think about it, this kind of makes sense because I said, Hey, just list the files in my directory in my initial response. Hey, list the files. Well, it doesn't even know what directory to go for. So first it's going to call the list allowed directories tool that is going to return to it a list of directories that it could LS. And then now it's going to call the list directory tool with that argument. So this is why it needed multiple tool calls. And it also had to first call the list allowed directories tool before it could call the list directory contents or whatever tool there was a dependency there. But anyway, now we're actually here. And that's why this next tool calls is non empty. And because of that, we're going to go back and do another iteration of this loop. So is done with tools is still false because we have another tool call to execute. And now we're going to go in and again, just call the tool in the MCP server. And why don't we set a breakpoint here just so you guys can see. So now we're going to call, what is this list directory? I believe let's find list directory. So let's put a breakpoint here. We'll notice that we are in the file system server. And if we go into the process console here, or rather if we go into the variable section, we will see that we are indeed just in the file system server. Anyway, let's continue. Let's set another breakpoint out here and let's continue. 
And now we're back with the tool response. Again, we're converting it back to a message that OpenAI can handle. We're adding it to the messages array. And now we are calling the follow-up response. And this time, I believe it's gonna be different. Let's, let's step through. We'll notice that next tool calls is null. And if we go to the assistant message, so the tool call follow-up message in this case, we're going down here to the debugger console, tool call follow-up response. We'll notice that there is a content set. So the assistant actually said something. It's saying, hey, here's the directories. So this is it just doing a silly LS for us. And in the tool calls, it's null. It's done executing tool calls. So now we're gonna finally break out of this loop. And now we are out of here. And now we're gonna go back and ask the user, so that would be me, to type in some more stuff. But this is really all that you need to implement a MCP client. It really is just this core loop of while true, grab user input, send to LLM, grab tool call requests, go and execute them, send back to LLM, rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat, that's it. That is it. Few things we wanna cover though, because there are some missing pieces here. First of all, I told you guys that we needed this parameter here, this on new message, and this is a function. This is a handler. Well, if we're dealing with any kind of user interface, which you almost certainly are, what we really wanna have happen is the messages to stream themselves in. So why don't I actually remove all the breakpoints? And now I can say, add a new file called lmao.txt and its contents should be a smiley face. So we're gonna type that in. That's gonna be my request. There's no breakpoints here. Okay, of course there's a breakpoint. Anyway, but notice how these messages stream in. So first we saw my user message. Then we got the assistant message. And then finally, we have the assistant telling me that this file was completed. Notice how those messages came in one by one. Well, we that's a good user experience. You don't wanna have the user sit there, wait for a minute, and then dump like five or 10 messages on them. It's really a better experience for all the messages to come in one by one. And because of that, we need to hook into this loop. And we need to have our UI get notified anytime a message gets added to that array so that we can format it. So if we look in the main dot, TS, which is the main of this application, I have this function, it's called pretty print message, and it is going to just format it nicely in the terminal. And I'm passing a reference to this function to the MCP client. And then that way the MCP client doesn't have to worry about what UI is actually connected to it. It just knows, hey, I'm gonna call this anytime I get a new message. And anyone who's interested in that event can act accordingly. And in this case, that would mean pretty printing a message. But you could imagine a world where instead of pretty printing a message to the console, you were emitting an event that was gonna get picked up by a UI, like an actual screen that the user was going to look at. This is why you would wanna do something like that. And that's why also there's this add message helper method. If we look in here, we're not just pushing the message to the messages array, we are also calling the on message handler. The other thing is how can you use different models here? Well, I said that we can use whatever model we want, despite the fact that we're using the OpenAI client. And to prove that we're gonna use uh, one of my favorite models, which is the cheap and very smart DeepSeek chat. This would be, I guess now this is DeepSeek V3. We're gonna go in here and say, hey, what is in lmao.txt? I'm gonna ask it what's in there. Hopefully it can find it. It's going through here. This is DeepSeek, it's not quite as fast as GPT-40 mini. Allow directories, okay, it found that. Let's see if it can find the file. I don't know exactly where it was, was put by GPT-40 mini. Okay, search file. So it, it was actually searching, it called a different tool. And boom, it found the file. It found lmao.txt. And it looks like indeed there is a smiley face. And if I actually open my file, and if I open the file browser here, we will see lmao.txt, the contents are right there. So DeepSeek was able to get it. But how did this work? How was I able to use DeepSeek here, even though this is the OpenAI API client? Like OpenAI is in hosting DeepSeek. And you're absolutely right. What's happening here is I'm using a service called Light LLM. I made a video about this before where I went over how to install it using Docker. But Light LLM is an LLM proxy server that you can host in the cloud. So I have, run, I have one running right now in AWS. You dump all your API keys there and you configure the models that you want it to work with. And what it does is it allows you to use the OpenAI API client. So in this case, exactly what we're seeing here, OpenAI. So I'm just calling new OpenAI. And you can use any model that is supported, any model that you upload an API key for. In my case, I did DeepSeek, I did Claude, I did Gemini, I basically did all the models. And what that means is I can test my application with any model I want without having to rewrite the code. If you wanted to use Claude or like some Anthropic model, you probably wouldn't be able to use the OpenAI API client out of the box. And that would require rewriting a bunch of this code, even though to be honest, most of it's basically the same. It's just kind of depending on the specifics of the API. So that's why I really like Light LLM, and that's why I'm able to use DeepSeek Chat here, which is much, much cheaper than even GPT-40 Mini and similar intelligence to GPT-40. 
I think a lot of people are sleeping on MCP clients. People are talking about servers and people are assuming that there's going to be some marketplace or there's going to be some app where you can always just plug your server in. But if you really want to be in control of your users, user experience, at least for now, you're going to have to implement your own MCP clients. Thanks for watching. We'll see you guys next time.